So contrary to popular belief, you really don't need much math as a software developer. In fact, if you can learn basic arithmetic and the symbols and comparison operators that I'm about to show you, you've pretty much got 90% of software development covered. If you're just trying to become a web developer, which I'm assuming that you are, don't need hardly any math. And the math that you do need is going to be very easy. And the way that I'm going to make this easier on you is that we're just going to split up what you need to know into two parts. We are going to have what are called the comparison operators, which are going to be our top part. So this is mainly concerned with comparing whenever you have the actual alligator mouse, whatever you want to call them, we're doing comparisons. And the bottom ones, we are checking for equality. We are checking if things are equal. And let's just go through, I'm assuming that as a software developer, you have a high school education, but if you don't, I'm still going to explain it just in case there's somebody out there. So what happens whenever you have these comparison operators is think of it as an alligator. This is an alligator mouth now. This isn't a comparison operator. We're now looking at alligator mouths. And these alligators are very hungry. They always want to eat the bigger numbers because bigger numbers mean, I don't know, more in terms of what alligators want. So let's just say we have a one over here and we have a two right here. The alligator mouth is eating the bigger number, so this is going to be indeed true. Another thing to really realize about comparison operators is that they always return booleans. They don't return numbers. They don't return anything else. The only thing that they return is going to be true or false. So let's go down here, and the alligator mouth is turned the other way, and that's the only difference. So if we have a 2 right here, and when we have a 1 right here, the alligator mouth is not eating the bigger number, so therefore it is going to be false. So this is the one where people might actually not be familiar with or not understand what's going on. And the same thing applies, but just a very slightly different way of looking at it. So alligator mouth is still going to apply. Let's just make them green so that it can be extra alligator-like. But now we have this equal sign. So if we have a one right here, let's just say we are comparing a one and a one. If we had this operator up here, none of these would be able to evaluate true because they are not equal to. But this includes an up to one. So this is going to be true. And the same thing is going to apply. If the numbers are equal, that is the difference. If it is an equal number, it will be applied. So let's go down here and let's say greater than or equal to uh, one. So two greater than or equal to one. This is also going to be true because it is greater than it, but it is not equal to. So it can be greater than, it cannot be equal to, but it can also be equal to, and that's exactly how the equal sign works. Just think of the equal sign as equal to, and that is the main difference between these two. So the next thing that we're going to have are these things called equality operators, and equality are just going to check if something is equal. So if one is equal to one, this is going to equal true, and the same applies for the bottom one. If one is equal to one, this is equal to true. But something strange happens. The difference between this and this is just going to be that the triple equals is strict. This is a strict equality. This is sometimes referred to as loose equality. If something is loose, it's not as strict. In 99% of cases, you're going to want to use the actual strict operator. You're going to want to use the triple equals. And the same rules apply. One is equal to one. A loose equality would be something like this. So if I put a one, an actual number, and then I put a one as a string, this would actually still operate as true. And the reason that it's going to operate as true is because something called coercion. If somebody is going to coerce you or somebody is going to try to force you to do something, it's going to coerce you. So what's going to happen is that it's going to try to coerce 
these into the same value. So either it's going to be a number, in this case, it's going to be a string, and it's going to try to coerce the string or the number into the same value. So if you have a number in here and one number is a string, it's going to try to turn the string into a number. It's going to try to coerce it and it's going to equal true. On the other hand, if you have the triple equals here, what's going to happen is that it's always going to be false because it's strict and it's not going to coerce it. It's not going to try to change it. And the last one that we need to talk about is non-equality. And non-equality is very simple. What this exclamation mark basically means is, is if something is not true, then it is true. And that may be very confusing for you, so let me just spell it out for you. So if one is not equal to, tr if, not, if one is not equal to two, it is true. Sorry, I got tongue-tied there. So if it is not equal, Hence, the actual, the actual exclamation mark, sometimes referred to as a bang symbol, it is indeed true. And the same thing applies for the double equal, except that this is strict. So let's say two is equal to one right here, then this is in fact going to be true. And if we have a two in here, so let's just say if we had a two, what is going to happen, or a string as a two, and because it is not going to be coerced, it is still going to be true because it is not equal. But if we had the same thing up here, so if I go up here and I have a string of two and I have a two right here, then it is going to in fact be false because it is equal. Remember that if it is equal, it is false. The world is upside down. We are in upside down world. We are checking if something is not equal and if it's not equal, then it is in fact true. So now we are in our Chrome DevTools and we are going to have a couple examples here. If you don't know how to get into Chrome DevTools, all that you do is you go into your browser, your uh, Google Chrome, you go to inspect, it will bring up your DevTools, make sure to hit console and you are good to go. So let's just go into our Chrome DevTools and Let's have a couple examples that we can look at and feel free to change them however you want to. So is three greater than two? Is the alligator eating the baker number? It is going to be true. Is two less than one? The alligator is eating the bigger number and this is in fact incorrect. It is now false. Let's check is three greater than or equal to two? is going to be true. And we can also have is two greater than or equal to two, and it is still true. And if we didn't, so if we had two just like that without the equal symbol, it is going to be false. Okay, so let's check out how strict equality works. So is one is equal to one. That is strict equality. But if we do this, one is equal to one right here, it is going to be false because it is, once again, strict equality. But if we have just two equals like this, it is in fact true because the coercion is happening. JavaScript is trying to coerce this into a string or a number. Which one it does, I honestly don't know, but it's trying to coerce it. Most of the time, once again, you're not going to want to do that. So stick with strict equals unless there is a specific use case. Hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to smack that like button, smash that subscribe button. As always, thank you for watching.